have not yet understood the shame. If you have fed with God's knowledge, if you have fed with God's understanding, then the new man in you will prosper. What kills the new man in you? Whenever the new man is not fed,
say he can restore. He can restore. I believe I believe. 
Everything we 
Just go ahead and lift up those hands and worship the Lord. Everything we need it is, is in the presence of God. Father God, here we are in your presence. For we believe that everything we need is in your presence. Yes, child of God, go ahead and worship him. And give him praise and glorify his holy name. Father God, you're worthy to receive the praise. You're worthy to receive the honor. There is none like you in power. There is none like you in glory. Yes, go ahead and worship the Lord and praise him. We welcome you, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God in our midst. It is you we need at such a time as this to bless us, to restore us, O oh God. Yes, just go ahead and worship Him. In these 40 days of prayer and fasting as we seek your face, let us see you, Lord. I want to know you. Let us all tell him. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. Lift up that voice and tell him.
the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. We can do better than that. Let us praise the Lord. Father, every hand praise is yours. Every hand praise is yours. Let us praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Lift up those hands and repeat these words and say, Lord Jesus, here I am in your presence. Touch my life. Bless my life. As I seek your face, whatever was lost in my life, let me recover it. Father God, look at every hand that is raised unto you. We are in a season of restoration. It is you who told us that this year you're going to restore our lives. That is what I declare unto every hand that is raised unto you. That by the time they leave your presence, let there be restoration in their lives. In Jesus' name. You are welcome, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God in our midst. Angels of God, come and minister with me. And also unto the people of God that are in the presence of God in Jesus name and every believer shouts aloud amen and every believer shouts aloud amen and every believer shouts aloud amen yes you are almost welcome in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ this is yet another great opportunity that God has given us to come back in his presence I want you to be ready to be blessed by the Lord in Jesus name Wherever you're watching us from, may God bless you. And I believe that as the word of God is going to be moving in his presence, that God will reach you wherever you are. Let us welcome all those who are watching us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, that, that clapping is yours. We also welcome you in the service in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you may be seated. God is a good God. Good morning, everyone. Yes, how are you doing? We are fasting, we are praying. This is what I know and this is what I believe. That this year, as the Lord has told us that we are going to recover whatever we lost, I believe it is going to be a very good and great year in our lives in Jesus' name. We are doing three things. We are praying, we are fasting, we are putting together our first fruit because at the end of the 40 days, we're going to be giving our first fruit. And I believe that as we apply all these spiritual principles in our lives that are godly, our lives are going to be great this year in Jesus' name. A lot happens to people and people don't know what to do to others because they don't have knowledge and understanding of what they are doing they never receive good result from what they are doing so that means that God wants on top of whatever you're doing for you to have knowledge for you to have understanding and when you receive the knowledge of God and the understanding of God because this comes from the wisdom of God what is gonna be next in your life is you excelling and becoming better than before yes we are looking at fast fraud but we must understand what fast fraud is about these are things that people hear but people don't have deeper knowledge and understanding of such things that is why you see when you tell somebody that we are in a season of putting our fast fraud together as we pray and fast for God to restore our lives, some people may not understand. But the more you receive the understanding and the more you receive the knowledge of God in your life, the better you become. God wants you to be better in life. God wants you to make it in life. Very many people are churchgoers 
and church is like just service but let me tell you something church is not just service it is a place where you must receive understanding and knowledge it is a place where you must develop in life and mature in life it's a place where you must become better in life when you've come to the church so it is not just a mere service of us coming and then after the end of the service going back god wants us to be better so this is our appointed time as a church to give our first fraud that is why we shouldn't or you shouldn't delay when giving it you know god sets times and seasons for everything a question comes yes it is the beginning of the year but why, why are we giving first fraud child of god this is what i want you to understand seasons and times are set by god of all times and seasons why is it that at such a time as this god demands fast fruit from us why is it that we are obligated to give fast fruit at such a time as this you must also understand why it is the beginning of the year and god wants also to begin with you because i believe by the beginning of the year most people are planning what to do in life most people are just are putting themselves together to see how they're going to get through the year but i want you to understand this making god fast in your life he will also make you fast in life what do i mean by saying so whenever you make god fast he will make you fast that means whatever will ever show up in your life whatsoever will ever come in your life is going to find you when you are number one don't allow situations to be fast in your life challenges circumstances so one of the things behind fast fraud whenever we give fast fraud god is made fast and when we make him fast he makes us fast that means that whatever comes against our lives after it is last and we are the first so that means you become an overcomer you are above what has come your way so it is our appointed time as a church to give fast fraud that is why we shouldn't delay or you shouldn't delay by giving fast fraud why the book of nehemiah is where we're beginning from nehemiah chapter 13 verses 31 and uh, we are taking our readings from english standard version remember this we've gone over 20 days we are halfway the fasting that means we are about to come out of the fast and from the time we began fasting we've been looking at fast fraud but we must have deeper revelation and understanding of what fast fraud does and what we receive from giving our fast fraud so the bible is saying in the book of nehemiah chapter 13 verses 31 english standard version and i provided for the wood offering at the appointed times and the first fruit that means that you don't give first fruit every time and again there are seasons and times where you must be giving first fruit especially as a church god and i told you how we began giving first fruit in this place and we're gonna see it more how we began giving first fruit so child of god there are seasons and times that god lays in your life and you must operate in these seasons and times so the bible is saying at the appointed time you must give your first fruit we are not saying that we're going to have other times to give first fruit as a church uh -uh. it is only once that we give first fruit and we saw this last sunday that every year as the bible says we come in the presence of god at such a time as this and give our first fruit as scripture says that every year we must come in the presence of god and give first fruit so that means it is not that god is going to demand first fruit every time and again it is only once in a year and then the rest of the months you begin to enjoy the harvest that comes from your first fruit so it is important for you to understand this 
that we are in our appointed time as a church we are in our appointed season as a church to give our first fraud but also we shouldn't delay in the seasons and the times that God has set for us when we when, when if we are to give our first fraud because Jeremiah chapter 2 verses 3 what does the Bible say the Bible says that the first fraud that okay let's first finish Nehemiah Nehemiah 13 the book of Nehemiah chapter 13 verses 31 it says that and I provided for the word offering at the appointed times and the first fraud remember me O God remember me O my God for good that means that when you are a first fruit giver you are remembered and God remembers you for good not for evil that means that your first fruit begins to attract good things to come your way whenever God is remembering your life whenever God is, remem is remembering you he remembers you at a level of good things not bad things that means that as you're giving your first fraud your first fraud will take your life on a level of receiving good things then in Jeremiah chapter 2 verses 3 of English Standard Version the Bible says that Israel was holy to the Lord the first fruit of his harvest all who ate of it incurred guilt disaster came upon them declares the Lord that means that it will be very very bad at such a season like this when God expects you to give your first fruit other than giving your first fruit you become the eater of it to very many people they think that things of God are just it's just it's just coming and telling God you know God you know because of what I'm going through God you know because of what is happening around my life but let me tell you this you being in God it is a lifestyle that you live and you must understand how to live in God to have a better life in him very many people have been in God but they have not been applying or doing what is right that is meant to make them better in God you find people being frustrated in churches in salvation and it is, seems as though it's the church with the problem it is God with the problem it is salvation with the problem but because many people don't know what to do when it comes to their part so child of God it is now time for you to understand and know as a believer what are you meant to be doing for you to be better in life so now the Bible is saying that Israel was holy to the Lord now they are trying to paint a picture to use Israel as a first fraud because the Bible says that Israel was holy to the Lord the first fruit of his harvest that means first fruit is holy it is an offering that is holy that is given unto the Lord whereby it becomes a disaster upon your life when you don't give it and eat it people begin to face many things in life and people point to the devil people point to others yet child of God this is what I want you to understand the season and time has come for you to be better and stop pointing a finger at your stepmama to stop pointing a finger at your boss or at anyone in life for you to know what to do right in life so that you get better in life ever people have someone to blame I am like this because of that pastor I am like this because of that church I am like this because of that woman I am like this because of that man I am like this because of the school that I went to I am like this because of the background that I came from now when will you change the song when will you rewrite a story that is better over your life when you have begun to receive the knowledge and understanding of what to do right in salvation many things are gonna change where the more you receive knowledge and understanding of God and know how to conduct your life in God you're gonna find yourself changing so now to people they enter the year without a, an offering that they are giving back to God 
yet there are very many things they want from God all of us we want a lot of things from God but the question comes yes you want from God but on your side what are you doing so these are the things that you must be doing because these are principles the principles based on the Word of God that can make your life to shine that can turn your life to become great and child of God this is what I want you to understand don't categorize your life with other people you got saved alone now begin to deal with your life alone live alone I had a friend who failed I have somebody who's struggling I have and then you begin to put your reference to others now it is time for you to stand as a person as a believer who believes in God and then begin to work out your salvation work out your salvation work out your salvation work out your salvation work out your life because God has not brought you into church he has not brought you into salvation to compare yourself with others there are very many people who are in church and they are failures there are very many people who are in salvation and they are struggling but you can't be different from them because what I'm sharing with you it is dealing with your life as a person if you can understand one thing it is not about a group thing it is not about the people it is all about me what can I do as a believer to improve on myself and you begin to apply these godly principles your life is gonna become a great life and you're gonna enjoy salvation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ so when the appointed time comes for us to give first fruit as a church and as a people that means that God is after blessing our lives now don't think that God is so much interested in your fruit he is so much interested in blessing you God is not so much interested in eating of your fruit in taking of your fruit because God has everything he's not in luck God is not in need but I want you to understand this because God is not a magician there are things you must do in order to receive from him now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor stop making God a magician when I said to stop making God a magician a magician is someone who can try to show you that something can ha happen instantly I remember when we were still in primary school they used to bring us these guys in, from Tanzania and they would turn handkerchiefs into sweets. They would turn papers into sweets and would enjoy and they throw sweets unto us. One time this man used to tell us to, to respond after, I don't know even what that word meant. We're all excited. And then one time he, he gets papers, he tears them, they become sweets and he begins to throw them. So he, there is a time when he threw a bunch of sweets and they fell where I was and all the sweets I got them now here came the big guys and they began telling me if you don't give us those sweets those sweets are evil you're gonna eat them and something bad is gonna happen to you I was so much afraid and I gave them the sweets but then I realized that these guys they also ate the sweets and they never died and then I began to cry and I began to say I want this guy once again to throw the sweets at me so to very many people that is how we are we don't want to work on our part of salvation we have turned God to be he used to tell us to say maseke maseke and we used to reply sokisa I don't know what that meant but watch this we are making God to be a magician there are things you want so badly in life but yet when it comes to your part you are, you are doing nothing that is godly that can attract God to come and work in your life but all you're saying Lord I want this Lord do this Lord do that but I want you to understand this time has come you as a believer to know that there is this other side of God which works with also your side when you have done what is right in him so when God demands first fruit from us he's not after our fruit he's after the blessing that we receive 
from giving our first fraud. So when it is time, as it is time for God to bless us, that means also on our part as a church, we must give our first fruit to Him and we shouldn't delay. Regarding to our giving unto God through our first fruit, because God wants to connect our lives to His wealth and to His riches. Don't you want to be wealthy? Don't you want to be rich? But a question comes in God, how do we become wealthy? In God, how do we become rich? To very many people, yes, we all pray as we are doing now. Yes, we all fast. Yes, we all read the word of God. But I want you to understand this. There are certain principles that lead us to certain things in God. So if you want to be rich and wealthy, because as God blesses us through our first fruit, He is after making us rich and wealthy in Him. God wants all of us. And this is not for some people. It is for all of us. Provided you receive the knowledge and the understanding and you apply it, the knowledge of God and the understanding of God, you're going to find yourself tapping into the riches of God, tapping into the wealth of God. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verses 4, and we're going to use NIV version. The Bible says, however, there need be no... There, there in Deuteronomy 15, verses 4, NIV version, the Bible says, however, there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be. Someone shout and say, there shouldn't be. Again. Again. Yeah, there shouldn't be no poor among you. So that means, child of God, God is not after making you poor. But what people enter into and they don't apply the principles of God is what makes them poor. If you say that ever since I got saved, I don't see my life becoming better. And it seems before I got saved, I was a little bit better. That means there is something you're not doing. God is not after we being poor. That, that is why you see, this first fruit we are giving, it is for all of us. Can you know what first fruit is? Can you know how to get the best out of what God has blessed you with and give it? You will find yourself reaching a level of being wealthy and rich. That means you can come out from poverty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can come out from poverty. You yourself, when you have received the knowledge and understanding of what the word of the Lord says unto your life and apply it in your life. So the Bible is saying, however, there shouldn't be no poor among you for in the land. Now watch this. For in the land, the Lord your God is giving you to possess as your inheritance. He will richly bless you. That means you can be richly blessed in God. Now watch this. How did we begin to give our first fruit? It's also a question. You can't give fruit when you don't have a ground. You can't, you can't give fruit when you don't have land or soil that produces the fruit. Now, how did we begin to give first fruit as a church? The time we came here, that is when I was seeking the face of the Lord. I know I tell you this story. I think we had come out from lunch hour and I was standing over the other tree over outside there praying and the lord jesus christ came and visited me and said as a church because now you have come to your land of inheritance are you hearing what i'm saying it is time for you to give first fruit i had had first fruit before but i had not received a deeper revelation of what first fruit was about and the lord began to teach me what first fruit was about and then he told me now listen to this you will begin to teach the people about fast fruit and every season this time of a season as a church come and give fast fruit unto me and see what i will do for you as a church and that is how we began fast fruit so don't think it is an imagination don't think it is just a makeup of somebody no we are not the first people to give fast fruit. And we've been giving, by the way, fast fruit for years. Fast fruit was there a long time ago, even in Bible days. 
But let me tell you this. There are times when God wants to bless you. There are times when God wants to richly bless you. But he has no ground that he can stand on to do so. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because he looks all around you. All you are just doing is just, just playing around in salvation. Not applying what should connect you to what you must receive. When you want to drive a car, you first learn it. And when you have learned how to drive, you must get a permit to drive. It is very, it is, you can get a car when you don't know how to drive it. And the car is just there. Or you can get a car, learn how to drive it, and fail to get a permit. Then you'll never drive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So child of God, if you have the salvation of God you qualify to be richly blessed by God but there are certain principles like when you get a permit to allow you to drive there are certain principles you must apply and begin to live by them in life for you to receive from the Lord which very many people don't even know they think in God, you just appear and then God becomes a magician and just throws at you whatever you need in life. So now when we came here and he said, this is your land of inheritance. And I remember by then we had begun praying also and fasting like as we are doing. And child of God, let me tell you this. This is the season. This is the appointed season and time. This is the appointed season and time for God to richly bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So as, because this is our appointed season, that means that as we give our first fruit, we're going to be presenting our lives in the presence of God through our first fruit, which you shouldn't delay to do. Your first fruit represents your life to very many people when they delay the delay of giving their first fruit it leads to people eating their first fruit so never eat your first fruit because we've seen in jeremiah that it is holy it belongs to the lord we shouldn't be eating what is the lord's if you don't understand this and you think that you can eat your first fruit then disaster is going to come. And when disaster comes, that means you are the eater of, your, of, of, you are the eater of the first fruit. That means now you have eaten what would have brought a blessing to your life. Now you begin to violate the financial principle of God. The financial principle of God, of God blessing you with wealth, of God blessing you with riches. First fruit. It is a financial principle of God. It is a financial principle of God that brings down wealth, that brings down riches, that brings down blessings upon our lives. Now that means that as you eat it, or when you delay to give it, or when you don't give it, you are violating the principle that God stands upon to bless your life that God stands upon to release wealth and riches over your life you become the eater of your harvest whenever you are giving first fruit to the Lord it is a harvest that you are invested in God it is a future harvest that you have invested in God so when you, you don't give it you have failed, that means to invest in God. But yet you want God to give you back. How many times do you invest in God the best out of what he has given you? It's a question. Because some of you may say, I give my tithes. Some of you may say, I plant my seeds. Some of you may say, I know I give my ordinary offering. But let me tell you this. First fruit, you get the best out of what God has blessed you with. And give back to him that is the difference because when you're tithing you give a 10 percent right you give a 10 percent when you're giving your ordinary seeds 
you just get anything as an offering and give because when you're planting your seed a seed you give it probably according to what you've decided from your heart but when it comes to fast fruit it must be the best out of what god has blessed you with he is your first fruit from what he has not blessed you with it is like for example if you may see me if this is my best suit and this is the best that i have i get what i'm trying to say so if i'm to give out of this i get from what either i give my trouser or i give my coat or i give my tie or i give my shirt the best out of this sort is what i get as a first fraud not anything now to god has blessed you and not to some but to all all of you god has blessed you and to many they don't go to the best where god has blessed them from you leave the best and go somewhere else to get the first fruit that can't be a first fruit first fruit must come from the best that god has blessed you with if you are to connect to the wealth and the blessing and the riches that god has for your life so when you become the eater of the first fraud that means you have failed to invest in god you have failed to invest you have failed to invest so that you have a future harvest so there will be no future harvest that means that there will be no blessing that can be poured unto you that can result in two wealth and riches in your life first fruit offering is a point of contact that connects you to the wealth that god has for your life and also the riches that god has for your life chronicles where we are the book of first chronicles chapter 19 verses 11 we're going to read this together from the screen the bible says in first chronicles chapter 29 verses 11 what does scripture say let us all read uh-huh no 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 let us all read child of god let us read with strength we are many we can do better than that let's read Again, let us read. Uh huh. Let us use New King James Version. What does it say? New King James Version. We read. New King James Version, please. Whosoever is on the screen, please be fast. King James Version. Let's all read. Uh huh. right my version says watch this of new king james of, of king james version that honor come from you now if you thought that there is another avenue where you're gonna get riches where you're gonna get wealth where you're gonna get honor forget it the bible says that both riches and honor come from you you reign over all in your hand is power and might in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all now if you want to be a great believer whom god has blessed if you want to be a great believer whom god has poured down riches and honor it is your first fruit that connects you to that because all this is in the hands of god so from the hands of god what do you want to receive from the hands of god what do you want to receive because all this is in his hands so when we apply the principle of first fraud it is a financial principle 
that leads us to the riches, to the wealth that is in the hands of God. And he has the power, he has the power and the might to turn you into that. He has the power. God has the power to make you rich. He has the power to make you wealthy. He has the power to bless you. And all this is in his hands. He will give you the strength for you to have it. Then but what does verses 14 say? English Standard Version. Let us read the following verse. Uh-huh. But. Uh-huh. Again, but. Uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh. Now, the Bible is asking a question. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able thus to offer willingly? For all things come from you and of your own have we given you. So that means that when you give your first fruit unto the Lord, you're giving, you're giving back what God has already blessed you with you're giving back to him now watch this solomon begins to ask this question whom am i and my people who are you for sure who are we you and i that god has loved us at such a season as this and he has appointed seasons and times to bless us people are looking for blessings everywhere people want to be wealthy but then god comes and says you're not going to be like them you're not going to move up and down like other people who are looking for things and they're not seeing them do this do this get a fast fraud with with the entire church and give it unto me and see so child of god let me tell you this when people begin to see you prosper when people begin to see you being rich, when people begin to see you making it in life, it is because you as a person, you have received understanding and knowledge and you have known what to do. For them, they don't do what you're doing in God. Yet it is for everyone who has received the knowledge and understanding. But ask yourself a question. How many people give us fruit for sure? and in the right way now because to, we are learning about it you're going to begin to hear very many people begin also to say which is not bad but you whom god has given this privilege to know what fast fruit is do it do it people reach a time and they say that one that one the wealthy has that one the blessing he has that is not godliness that is not godliness my friend for you, you have applied the principle earlier. Early in the year. As the year is beginning, others are planning for things. Others are planning for this and that, which is not bad. But you have decided to make God number one through your first fraud. So when you make God number one, he must also make you number one. Let me allow the amen. Let me allow the amen. Because you're going to make God number one is also going to make you number. By the time crisis comes, you're number. Then crisis is number what? Yes, poverty will be number what? Make situations, challenges, and other things be the next number. But be number one, in other words, be above them. Be above them. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Who are we for sure? Who are we? I can imagine God descends to your level and says, Hey, I want to make you rich. Hey, I want to prosper you. Because what I'm talking about is in my hands. He's not giving us what he does not have. He has it. God has the riches. He has the wealth. He has the honor. He can turn you to become great. He has already spoken it. We are not just concocting stories. We are not just putting up a sermon. Uh -uh. We are on a principle. But we must know how to apply it to receive the good out of it. 
Let me hear loud amen. amen. Time has come for all of us in life restoration to be rich. Let me hear loud amen. amen. It is biblical. We've already seen in Deuteronomy chapter 15 verses 4. NIV version saying that among us now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor as I look at you when you become a first fruit giver. You're going to be rich and I'm also going to be rich. That is what scripture has said. That among us. That means we shouldn't be in church. We who are members of this church. When God has brought a season to bless all of us. When God has brought a season to take us all of us out of poverty. That means next person and everyone around you. We are all going to be rich. We are all going to be wealthy. We are all going to be better in Jesus name. So the man begins to ask who are we? Because we are fast fruit givers, we shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Who are we? Because you are givers, child of God, time has come for you to be better than what your life was before in Jesus' mighty name. So whenever we give our fast fruit offering, we are applying this godly principle, which is a financial principle of God's wealth, of God's riches in our lives. We are attracting them. We are attracting the riches. We are attracting the wealth into our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Now somebody may say, I used to think those people are so spiritual. What are they talking about? This is also spiritual. God has never made you to be spiritual yet to be very poor. Uh -uh. He wants you to be spiritual when you are rich, when you are wealthy. Let me allow the amen. Let me allow the amen. Now, what is better? To be so spiritual and so poor or so spiritual and so rich? Thank you so much. Now, whosoever begins to tell you, now those are materialis materialistic things. People have left, have left that spiritual side. No, we are still spiritual people. Abraham was a spiritual person, but he died of two things, riches and age. And it is my prayer because all of us, God is going to make us rich that we shall die of two things. <laughs> Not sickness and disease, but riches and age in Jesus' name. Let me hear a loud amen. Because among us, there should be no what? There should be no what? Why? For in the land, which land? This land where we are as a church of life restoration. God has given us this land. We have possessed it. It is forever and ever ours as a church. This is our inheritance. So time to be richly blessed is now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me hear a loud amen. amen. We are in the land of inheritance as a church. This is our inheritance. Don't think we are going elsewhere. We are here forever. And because we are in the land, we qualify to be richly blessed by God. Now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor we are in the land of inheritance. Because we are in the land of inheritance, we qualify to be richly blessed by God. So our first fruit, when you give your first fruit, it becomes a spiritual action that is witnessed by heaven now first fruit is for the lord first fruit belongs to the lord so as you give your first fruit to the lord it becomes a spiritual action which is witnessed by the and then your life is spiritually positioned into the wealth and the riches of god it is a spiritual action now, as we end the fast in our 40 days and as we're going to bring our first fruit in the house of the Lord, it is going to be a spiritual action that is going to position, that is going to, is, that is going to make the heavens to be a witness over your life. That means that your life is going to be positioned spiritually to the riches and the wealth of God. That is why there's going to be a divine supply in form of provision. Because it is a spiritual action that you're going to be doing of giving your first fruit. In return, there's going to be a divine supply. 
as God begins to provide for you throughout the year. That means that first fruit givers never lack. They are ever connected to the heavens. Their heavens are open. There is ever an open heaven that brings down divine supply unto your life. And this supply becomes godly provision in your life. So when you give your first fruit, it becomes a sign of confirmation. Now you are confirmed by the heavens that this sister, this man must be blessed. Give us of first fruits are confirmed by the heavens themselves and that is why upon you there comes a sign of the multiplication power of God upon your life what do I mean by saying so see what you're organizing see what you're preparing to give us your first fruit it is not compared to what God is gonna bless you with many times yes we may call it the best that we are giving but when God takes it because it is given unto him he multiplies it so that means unto you the giver god puts also the power of multiplicity upon your life don't think if you're gonna give your first fruit let me say it is a bull you're gonna give unto the lord hmm? let's say it is money you're gonna give unto the lord let's say it is a house you're gonna give unto the lord let's say it is a car you're gonna give unto the lord and then in return god will give you like as you gave unto him no way because the heavens witness what we give unto the lord when you become a first fruit giver upon you god releases the power of multiplication he multiplies what you've given unto him and when he has multiplied what you've given unto him see what the bible says in the book of Luke chapter 6 verses 38. Now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor you have also entered the season of multiplicity. Tell that to your neighbor. Mm. We are not only in the season of giving but also we are in a season of being multiplied. That means God is going to multiply your business. God is going to multiply everything around you. Now some may ask, is God going to multiply husbands in my life and wives in my life? Because I've said everything. But listen to this. God is going to multiply your life. God is going to multiply you. What does the Bible say? Let us all read the book of Luke chapter 6 verses 38. Give. No. Let us all read give. And that is what I love about God. When you give unto God, he gives back to you. That is the principle of giving. Think you can give unto the Lord and he never gives unto you back. The principle is very clear. Are you giving unto God? He's going to give unto you. But when he gives unto you, he gives unto you on a level of multiplicity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He multiplies and he gives unto you. So the Bible is saying, give and it shall be given unto you a good measure. Somebody shout and say a good measure. You see, for him he has taken it now on another level. As he's giving back to you, he releases a good measure. Moreover, press down, shake together and running over. That is overflow running over will be put in your bosom now watch this I want to show you something gentlemen come here please with your Bible with your book now he has brought his first fruit unto the Lord right give unto me i am the lord right can i have you guys your books and your bibles please sold here can i have even those guys can i have your books and your bibles all the year for lunch i i, I, I want 
Okay, now, faith comes by, not by writing and writing. It comes by, and now, don't write here, right? Now, watch this. I, I am God. All I have, these are the riches, these are the blessings. Now, he comes with this first fruit. Right? When he went unto me, he remains with nothing. And in order for me to give him, there must be gap for me to fill up. Right? So when he gives me his first fruit, I press it down, I shake it together, it becomes overrunning now. Remember, he used the hands to give the works of his hands so me who is God who has taken your first fruit when God is giving us back because of the power of multiplicity what is gonna do even the hand that gave can't hold this but it must go to a level of bosom because it is a good measure you put it together it begins to overflow it is more than what you gave before. Now, who does, not want, who does not want to be like him? Having an overflow, which can be held by the hand. But it is so big whereby you must rest it upon your life. And even upon the life, it begins to overflow. As it begins to overflow, this is when you begin to be a blessing to your sister, a blessing to your friends. You have more than enough. Everyone around you can receive. And also you remain with what? Oh my God. You remain with a good measure. You know, my child has no school fees. This is the overflow where you get school fees from. Go pay school fees. They have, I don't have what to eat. Go have what to eat. But again, God has given you even much more. But there are those who are eaters of the first fruit. They have nothing. Disaster comes their way. These people want to receive also. You know also, I am like you. We are living that level. We are living that level. God wants you to be a blessing in your family. He wants you to be a blessing in church. He wants you to be a blessing in this nation. Let God release an overflow over your life. It is a season of God multiplying your life. It is a season of God multiplying you. When he says he's bringing back what was lost, you think what is felicity brings more than enough in Jesus' mighty name. Overflowing in your bosom. That is multiplicity. Thank you. Help me take their Bibles back. So, the pressing down and the shaking together of your first fruit offering, which brings an overflowing blessing of God upon your life. And then, the power of multiplicity begins to manifest through the blessings of God that are released unto you as they come to a level of a bosom in Jesus' mighty name. And child of God, listen to me. That is much more greater than what you gave unto the Lord. So now that means when we give our first fruit to the Lord, God uses the equation of multiplying our first fruit offering that we give unto him. What equation does he use? When we give our first fruit unto him, he uses an equation of pressing down. He presses it down. He begins to shake it together. And then now it begins to overflow. May that happen to you this season in Jesus' mighty name. As you get your first fruit to give unto the Lord, may you realize an overflowing blessing over your life in Jesus' mighty name. And may God release overflowing blessings over your lives in Jesus' mighty name. The book of Deuteronomy is where we are. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18. Let us all read. What does the Bible say? Let us read. 
Aha. Uh-huh. Now watch this. The Bible is saying, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to do what? People for sure remember God. Very few people remember. Most people don't. Now, a question times when we give our first fruit, he goes and says, Oh God, remember me. That means you have got from what he has blessed you with and given back unto him. You have remembered him. Don't be people who never remember. The people don't remember. People are through what he has given you. You want, to remember, you want God to remember you because you want school fees. You want a marriage. You want, you, want some, you want to be healed. But let me tell you this. Whenever we remember God, it is when we honor him with what he has blessed us with. Out of the possession, out of the substances that God has blessed us with, we give him back. That is remembering him. It is a way of acknowledging him as the source and supplier and a provider in our lives. So as you are giving your first fruit back to the Lord, you are remembering him. You are positioning God. You are putting him in a position of the source of your blessing. You are putting him in a position as the supplier and provider of things that you have in life. This is when you receive the power to eat of your riches. This is when you receive the power to eat of your wealth. Now, do you know that there is also that level of eating of your wealth and eating of your riches? It is possible to have riches, to have wealth and never eat of them. And someone else comes and eats. I've seen that. You can go in an organization. You do a lot of work. You improve it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everything runs on you. And when the organization has stabilized for greatness, this is when they cut you off. You don't enjoy the level of greatness, but all you can talk about how you toiled in that organization. I put all my time in that office. I put all my time in that career. It is possible. You can build a house and finish it and fail to live in it. Or you can finish it and even make a house warming and people come and then what happens? After some time, you sell it off. You don't have the power to maintain it. People begin businesses. It booms and everyone is like, Mama, that woman is blessed. That man is blessed. After a while, you lose the business someone else comes over takes it on and it shines what is behind that you must and listen to me very well you must have the power to eat of your blessing you must have the power to eat of your riches I have seen very many people you go to school one of the courses that take people in school for a long time it's a course of being a doctor. I was talking to some guys in abroad and they were busy telling me to become a doctor here. It takes you nine to ten years. Can you imagine? You study nine to ten years to become a doctor. Anything from being a doctor. You go to other things. Having spent all that time. What happened? You fail to have the power. You fail to have the power to eat of your blessing and to very many people they have failed to eat of their blessing your grandfather or your father had a lot of land and all you talk about you know my father was rich my grandmother was rich it reaches to your generation you are in Kampala renting what was the problem you failed to have the power to eat and it is God who gives us that power that creates wealth, 
but enables us to eat. Whenever we remember God, are you hearing what I'm saying? Whenever you remember God, by honoring him with what he has blessed you with, he will give you the power to eat of your blessing in Jesus' matter now. Soon and very soon we are going in our building. But there are people who fail to reach that level of God. Such people are there. You are the one who knows one time somebody was telling he's here. But you don't have the power to enter into the cathedral, to enter into something great. What happens? God blesses you with a man, with a woman, or with a wife, or with a husband, and you lose the wife, you lose the husband. What happens? Ill to eat. But it is my prayer. You give your first fruit and see. As Nehemiah has said, remember me for God and for the first fruit. This is the appointed time. There is no at this season. If you can enter into the season known for evil, he will give you the power that will enable you to eat of your blessing in Jesus' name. You know, when I entered that office, I entered that company, the first paid me the first months, but now they no longer pay me. That means you have lost the power. Son of recovering, but also first fruit has the power to recover what we lost. Whatever you lost before, this is a season of recovering it in Jesus' name. Because God has told us 2022 is a year of recovery. Covering. May you recover what you lost. May God remember you. May God remember you. If you fail to buy tires for the car, you fail to wash your car. It's dirty. You don't have power for the bay. You don't have power for washing. It's inside. You're economizing fuel. You don't have power for AC. For you think it is okay, it's not okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are in a house. Darkness is like darkness. At night you use only one bulb. Yaka has become like yaka. You only have, you can't put on, you put on 5,000 and moreover. Whenever a child leaves the bedroom, take off the light. Take it off. Sometimes it is you. You're ever patrolling the house at night. No wonder you sleep and you don't wake up to pray. You are from one bedroom. You take off the light. You go to another. You take off the light. You don't have the power. You are in your own house, but you are night walking. You are like a sorcerer in your own house. You don't have the power. Ah, but glory be to God. He's going to remember you through your first fruit. Look at the way you look. God created you so beautiful. So handsome. You don't have the power to maintain your hair. You don't have the power to maintain your body. But God is going to remember you. Oh my God. Give your first fruit and see. You're going to be remembered in Jesus' name. Let me hear loud amen. amen. Let me hear loud amen. amen. Can I know what is missing in the house? Mommy, daddy, there is no soap. What happened to the soap that I brought? What happened to the sugar that I brought? One kilo, even it can take three days. Now people can't have tea the way they want to have it. You don't have the power for that. What happened? Who's misusing sugar? Who's misusing sugar in the house? <laughs> Tell your neighbor. There is one evil that happens under the sun. Which evil is that? Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verses 1. Oh my God, our first fruits are going to cause us to be remembered by God. The book of Ecclesiastes, what does it say? Let us all read. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it is what? <laughs> this is common. This is common. Solomon reached a time through his wisdom. It's a common evil and a 
are the sun among us man among us man and i'm here to say among us such people for you your name is gonna slam there is an evil you're gonna overcome by the power of the holy ghost because of your first fruit there are certain things which are common to others which shouldn't be common in your house which shouldn't be common in your life there are things that are common many people fight for taxes many people it is a common evil are you hearing what I'm saying? Yesterday, someone, we had people who came and visited us. And this is amazing. This man is an accountant. This one is a lawyer. And then, they are all putting, I said, which thing? You know, this COVID, man, it hit us. I said, <laughs> in our house, in our lives is something it may be a common evil but you are a fast fruit giver you come out of common evil let others let it be common to others but to you it should not cross over but to you it should not touch you let me allow them to somebody you know there's certain common evil it is common it is common you know it you can't take you can't take someone these days when you've not slept with him it is all over the place it is common let the common evil stay with people who don't know god let the common evil stay with people who are not fast fruit givers but you has received revelation you has received knowledge that common evil that you hear you know in our family all of us all of us that all of us thing all of us are like this all of us we fail all of us at such a time as this happens ah, ah, for you you are coming out of the common evil that is under the us which is common to others for you it will never be common because you are becoming a first fruit giver let me allow the amen in jesus mighty name i'm coming out of the common ah, ah tell your neighbor if you are if you are if you are normal if you are common for me i'm coming out of the uncommon you must come out from those levels let me allow the amen god gave us a word before covid came you remember that god is going to give us cars look at the parking do you see all those cars if you don't have one yours is next in jesus name time has come because all of us are going to be blessed every member of life restoration you must drive yourself if it is not common elsewhere, if it is, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? This common thing, you know, in churches, people who come in churches are poor. Ah, first, we are changing. We are coming out of those common things among us men. Let me allow the amen. <laughs> Let me allow the amen. So the Bible says there is an evil. That means what is common to most people. It is not godly. It is evil. Are you hearing what is evil? It is common. But you who is in God, it is going to be different. There is an evil which I have seen under the earth. And it is common among his men. Tell that neighbor, those evil common things... They, they are not your portion in life. Mm -mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are not a portion in your life. It is common that everyone puts on Muvumba. But you who is a first fruit giver, you must come out of that evil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are things that are evil which are common. You must come out from those evil common things. Look at verses 2. Verses 2 continues to say, and how we read, a man. <laughs> Can you imagine? You reach a level, and God, and God gives you riches, and God gives you wealth, and God gives you honor, so that you lack nothing for yourself. All that you desire, you receive it. Yet, my God, yet, oh, praise the Lord, I have a husband, people clap their hands, five years on the road, you are in hell in that house with that husband, 28 years, 30 years, you look at a woman, you, that is the problem, you don't have power to maintain, you don't have power to eat what was given unto you you reach a time now the Bible says
says yet yet you don't have power to eat of it and now another person comes in he says you don't know what you're playing around with for me that will work for me yet it can't work for you for me that will bless me yet it can't bless you what is the problem i am here to say as you give your first fruit you receive power to eat of your blessing you receive power to possess your possession but if you don't God will never remember you. He will never remember you. Put God in remembrance through your first fruit. Let your first fruit go before the presence of God. And from January to December, whenever God turns around in his presence, he will say, Katokeneth is in my presence through his first fruit. But to some people, he turns around and he says, Okay, I would have blessed Katokeneth. But what is the financial principle? The financial principle is he, would, he, he, was, he was meant to give a first fruit in January. January, and he never did so. Here comes Kato Kenneth in the months of April, in the months, the eighth month. Oh Lord, bless me. And the Lord says, I'm not a magician. I stand upon my word to do whatever I do. Child of God, let your first fruit be your representation in the presence of God. Let him stand upon it and let God release his power. He because he has the power. The world is in his hands. The power is in his hands. The strength is in his hands. He's just waiting for your side. He's just waiting for your first fruit. Can you release it unto him? If you can release your first fruit unto him, you will eat of your possessions in Jesus' name. For me, I used to travel abroad. <laughs> but now I can't. You lacked a time to honor God with your possession. You failed to honor God with your possession. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 9. What does the Bible say? Honor the Lord thy God. Not with the lip. Honor the Lord thy God with the possessions that he has given you. With the first fruit. Honor him and see with your first fruit. He will increase you. But to many, people want increase. Yet what brings increase? They don't do it. Now turn to that neighbor and ask that neighbor, what do you have that the foreigner took? <laughs> turn to another neighbor and ask that neighbor, hey neighbor, what do you have that was eaten by someone else, yet you are the one to eat it? What do you have? I'm having a problem, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Which problem? This guy is on and off. This girl is on and off. Hey, hey, hey. Give your first fruit. He will stabilize. She will stabilize. I knew there can't be an amen. But we are learning principles that give us power to eat. Say, I must have power to eat. Speak it again. Speak it again. Child of God, you must have power to eat of your career, to eat of your money. You must have power to possess your house, to possess your land. You must have power. You know, I'm so broke. I want to take my land title in the bank. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bank is a foreigner who's going to eat your wealth. But be a fast fruit giver. God will remember you for good. He will ever release money. He will ever release possession. And you will never lack. And you will have power to eat. Let me hear loud amen. Okay, tell that neighbor. I've seen you've been lacking power to eat. Hmm. You lack that power to enter into a shop. Eh? Even though things are not expensive, you just look through the window and say, Mama, you lack the power even to enter. Then as you're passing by the street, these guys who clap their hands, I think they have they taken off the, have they taken them off the street? Papa. Egg. No bargain. Mutualo, mutualo, mulonde. 
But when you look at the shop, my God, you run. Uh -uh. You're going to get the power. Let me allow the amen. Let me allow the amen. <laughs> Let me allow the amen. Hey, kati tuambala manyi kuriabi afe kampulida amina. Fast fruit e tuambaza amanyi. Ogendo kuambala amanyi gwe musajja gwe. Oyabada kwe changira koyo mwale ye fula fula. Ogenda muambali na amanyi. Kampulida amina. Wambuli wabado mutu kako na gamba. Hai. Hi there. Yes, yes, yes. We are going to possess the power to build and finish. We are going to possess the power to finish off what we began. We are going to possess the power to eat of our wealth, to eat of our blessing. Somebody shout aloud, Amen, in Jesus' name. There are things you've been running away from because you don't have the power. But now, you are overcoming the common evil under the sun. Let me hear loud, amen. When people come and sit around you, you pretend that you don't know their language. Since Uganda is a, a UN nation, the devil took your esteem away. Yesterday, these guys, whom I'm telling you, came to visit us. They, 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 you know, someone who has a high profile. At the end of it, oh, Pastor Olivia can be a witness. They bow down and they said, Man of God, pray for us. We can't live here without a prayer. We can't live here without a blessing. I said, Yeah. You are in a common evil under the sun. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to well, why are you? Why are you? Why are you? Only the chenku gamba. Why are you fast fruit to your lumbe? Oh, yeah, yeah, you do it. Well, what yanga? We gained our trotia. I didn't mean that. Well, you're going to your dome to New York. Well, you're going to have a mimu minene. Well, you're going to have a take a keka. Oh, go away. Go away. We're going to have a take a coach pencil. It's when you'll be up. The way in kind of lunge. Mwambali da man. Ha katin sin this seven one never sister. Now we sister gambali. Sister gambi a change of gede yo chikwe gambali. O ite ite wo vot. E chidako o ja chite geda. Now child of God listen to me. We are coming out from the common evil. It's not godliness, it is evil. That has made people known to eat. But we're going to give our first fruit. And we're going to eat in Jesus' name. And as we are going in prayer. Hmm? To get As we are going in prayer, we are going to put on the strength of prayer. And God is going to be faithful. Are you ready to put on the strength of prayer? Now what is prayer going to do? Mark says, chapter 11, verses 24, NIV version. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Put on that strength, put on that power, and see. Whatever you're going to ask, it's going to be yours. Let me allow the amen. Let me hear loud, amen. Wealth is going to be yours. Riches are going to be yours. 
things are going to be yours. Remember as we give our first fruit. First fruit brings recovery of what we lost. If the Bible has said in Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verses 2. That yet. Eh, but yet. Yet God does not give him power to eat of it. But a foreigner consumes it. Now who is the foreigner who has consumed what is yours? It's the devil. Because our enemy is not flesh and blood. But principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. Now that foreigner must give up what he ate. It is you to eat what belongs to you. Stand up everybody. Lift up those hands. Yes, I know we are many, but there is a lot of space outside. If here you're so, you can't move well because people are everywhere, you're going to go outside. But I'm going to pray. Lift up those hands. Senyambalama nyikati. Gama mulinyeria yesu. Nyambalama nyikati. Go kusaba, ebi angebio na, nenda bifuna. Say in the name of Jesus, right now, I receive the power through my prayers to recover all things that belong to me. Now, child of God, we're gonna pray. But not this prayer. And then you look around, you look at someone. I believe that all of us, even I, there are things we lost which must be recovered, which must be brought back. God telling us that all this year is a year of restoration. You think, what did he mean? There are things that were lost but must be recovered from all of us. And we need them in Jesus' name. Can someone enter prayer right now by the power of the Holy Spirit? Can someone enter prayer right now? Father, as we pray, let this happen in Jesus' mighty name. He can tell your brother Sataka. He can to Shetembre de Sikata Brada Sakata. Yes, go on, go on, go on and pray. Go on and pray in the name of Jesus. What is yours must be yours. By the power of the Holy Spirit. He can tell Yes. We are in His presence right now in the mighty name of Jesus. He will do it. He will do it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are back into restoration and we are seeking for the power right now to receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for what you are. You have released upon us the word is not midst, flowing like nothing. We have come to remember what Isaiah 55 verses 11 says. As we are before you right now, in the name of Jesus, so is my word. Be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void. But we know now it is the functioning of the word, and there must be an action against it. Everyone now who has ever lost, there are many things, Lord, you have spoken the truth towards our lives. It is true. There are moments when we own things. There are moments when we have things, but we can't enjoy them. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as Matthew says, 6, beginning verses 9, we are before you, we have come. He says, our Father in heaven, allow be your name. But instead, your kingdom come, your build will be done on the earth at his, as it is in heaven. It is true. Let it be done right now. Why? We have heard in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, let us begin with verse 11. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatest, the power and the glory. 
the victory and majesty to what we have had right now. It is carrying power to us. It is carrying victory to us right now. In the name of Jesus, may this happen. He says, for all that is in heaven and in the earth is yours. Yours the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted as head of all. When we go back in the name of Jesus, as brothers and sisters to each and everybody, you are talking to God, you are speaking something to God for recovery, for restoration. May this happen to us. We are speaking to the God who owns everything, who does each and everything. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are saying whatever we have ever lost, anything we have ever lost in the name of Jesus. Some of us, we have lost countries. We have lost people, important people, people who are to add value unto us. We have lost relationships, oh God. We have lost connections, oh God. We have lost properties, oh God. We have lost families, oh God. We have lost relationships. But in the mighty name of Jesus, to the God who is in heaven, that can do it on the earth now, as it is done in heaven, may this happen to us. In the name of Jesus, somebody you have heard, for the scripture says in Romans 10, 17, the Bible says, Oh God, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God has been in our midst. And I believe everybody has heard what God is telling us in the mighty name of Jesus, regardless of which level you be on, regardless of which size, regardless of which standard, the devil knows nothing and the devil knows nobody. He has afflicted us. He has done it to us. Why when we sing Ecclesiastic chapter 6, O oh God, as the Bible say, beginning verse 1, for the Bible say, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among the men. There are issues we face. There are problems we are facing. But with the worst part of it, O oh Lord, they are common to each and everybody. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are declaring this was done by Satan. This was done by the devil. We overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. This is where the worst part is. As we see verses 2, in the name of Jesus, I believe somebody you are praying. I believe somebody you are talking to God. I believe somebody. As it ends says, this is vanity and it is an evil affliction. We've been afflicted, oh God. We've been afflicted. But there are men, Lord, who have ever stood. As they have stood, as we are in this life, restoration of God. There is a scripture in the book of Ezekiel, oh Lord. Chapter 37, verse 3. There is a question that comes before. That comes before Ezekiel. This is what God asked Ezekiel. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord, you know, in the mighty name of Jesus, God gave us this year, the year of restoration. Every bone, every death, every dry bone. Why? Poor soil. In First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35, in the mighty name of Jesus, may this happen to us, we are to live again. There is another again. He said, but someone will say, how the dead raise up. And with what body do they come tonight? We are the same people. In the mighty name of Jesus, to go back for our relationships, to go back to everything, Lord, that we have lost, child of God, my brothers and sisters, it is true, we've been advised something very simple. This is what Nehemiah did. As we see Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 31, the Bible says, and I provided for the wood of him at the appointed times and for the first rule. He says, remember me, O God, for good. We must be remembered tonight in the mighty name of Jesus as the mission 
is. Nobody can lose this. As God says in Proverbs 3 verses 9, in the mighty name of Jesus, the scripture says, Honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruit of all your increase. We have come to do it because verses 10 says, in the name of Jesus, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vicinities will overflow with new wine. You have had what the scripture said in Luke 6 as we give. What happens in the mighty name of Jesus? Give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down. Second together and running overflow. Over will be put into your bosom. This is what we want right now. I come back in the name of Jesus. We are not going to lose hope. We are not going to look, give up because it is God who is commanding us in the mighty name of Jesus. Regardless of what has happened, we are putting the down on our titles, oh God. We are putting down all our positions. We are back to you. Why? He says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 11, there are mothers here. There are doctors here. There are technical people here. There are experts here. There are men and women, Lord, who are highly educated. But the Bible says, NLT, in the name of Jesus, it is not about that. It's about what God is to do. The Bible says, I have observed something. Errors under the sun. The fastest run runner does not, doesn't always win the race. The strongest warrior does not, but doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. We thirst, oh God, we stand up. goes on to say, and the skillfuls are not necessary, and he says necessary will it be. and those who are educated don't always lead successful lives, Father whatever was taken in the mighty name of Jesus whatever was taken we need that right now to the life we are supposed to live he is restoring our lives in the mighty name of jesus what a powerful message of god the power behind it is driving us he has said in Deuteronomy 8 18 oh god in the mighty name of jesus and you shall remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you power to get wealth and that he may establish your covenant which is so to our fathers we are back oh god in the name of jesus we are back to you my brothers and sisters just open up your mouth to god to do it to respond to us in the name of jesus remember the bible says oh god in first peter first peter second peter chapter one verse three in the name of jesus it will happen to us he says as his divine power has given to us all the things that pertaining to life child of god it's about life now in the name of jesus it's about your life what is happening in our homes what is happening in our families what is happening in our lives what is happening in our in our offices in our workplaces lord tonight we receive power by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, child of God, let us speak to him. We are in his presence. He will heal us. He will bind us. He will deliver us. He will change us. In the name of Jesus, somebody talk to God. Somebody speak to God. There is an answer from him. He will do it tonight. He will do it today. With God, this was only Mary who saw it as Luke 137 says, amplified in the mighty name of Jesus. For he says, nothing shall ever be possible. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. Nothing. So that's why we stand now. As, as his word is commanding us by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us talk to him. Stand 
on behalf of your children, stand on behalf of your future, stand on behalf of everything around you. In the name of Jesus, it will be so. It will be so. There are men who have ever stood. As we say, we see Job 22, beginning verse 26. I need message Bible in the name of Jesus. He says, you will take light in God, the mighty one, and look to him joyfully, bloodly. This is what we have done in the name of Jesus. We are doing it right now, bloodly before God. In the name of Jesus, we are looking at him because we know he has an answer. He has an answer to you. Father, there are moments. It's like we are about to achieve it and then we lose it. As we are about to have it, then we lose it. May you intervene today in all areas of life. May you come in today in areas of life and intervene, oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody you need to talk to God now. Somebody you need to speak to God. Where Paul stands, in Hebrews 4, 16, this is what he says. He stands and says, there is a way we have to be there. He says, let us therefore come brother to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is what we have done. In this time of need, we are before the throne of God. In this time of need, we are before God. May you air out what has been inside of you, that has been afflicting you. There has been poverty. Oh Lord, poverty, sicknesses, and disease. So we've been told, oh Lord, through the summon of God, Deuteronomy 15, for the Bible said, in the name of Jesus, the Bible said, among us, among us, there shall be no poor. We declare by the mighty name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the wealth and the riches God has prepared for us, we tap into it. Because Lord is preparing us to be givers of first and foremost. Somebody talk to God in the mighty name of Jesus. In words, report everything that has ever failed. Why? When we see Joel, chapter 2, verses 25. Oh God in heaven, may this be done today as we are in your presence. May this happen for us. So I will restore to you years. I will restore. I do not have many years. To some are over 20. To others, Lord, they are over 10. To others, a few years. But may his power of restoration that we need good life. May you restore our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Deal with us. Father, we have seen. We have seen financial frustrations. People who are earning. They are earning it too. We have seen financial frustrations. People who are working. They are no longer working. Those who are working, Lord. They are in loans. They are in debt. But tonight, restorer. The restorer. Restore us, O oh God. We have seen business frustrations. Even, Lord, in our companies, oh God, we are lacking a lot. But tonight we stand. Even our wisdom, oh God, was frustrated. Even the knowledge we had was frustrated. But to get back to into our positions, we are meeting great men. We are connected to the rest of the world. Right now, oh God, we are dealing with great people. By the power of the Holy Spirit, their levels we are tired of, oh God. Their standards we are tired of. With the uplifting must be of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody talk to God. Somebody speak to God. Sabata kata 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 
Something to ask for Lord. It is on our way. We have lost our relationships. Why you seeing and watching when we have no reason of God? But tonight, restoration of God. In the name of Jesus, restoration of God. We have lost opportunities of God and chances, even Lord, that you have ever brought our way. Some of us we have cases of God to answer even to lower people. But Lord, the uplifting is yours. There's that power in the mighty name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we are shifting our eyes to them from the people. We are saying it has to be done by God. Lord, we need something. No strings to attach to any man as we are before you. Yeah, they must fall. Somebody declare it. There is a war around you that must fall. That's why, Lord, we stand to pray for our favor. We stand to pray for our favor. We stand to pray for our blessing. This happened to Mary. The Bible says, oh God, as your word says, it's Luke chapter 1, verse 28. We stand, Lord, we are praying for it. We are praying for it. The Bible says, having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among the women. We need to stand in public when we are the best. We need to stand wherever we are. When things are simplified, when things are simple, in the name of Jesus, what we have done today, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, verses 1 of Isaiah 55 says, In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody you still have what to say. In the name of Jesus, it is not a price, but that's about coming to God. We have come to God. Why? The remembrance has come. In Isaiah 55, Isaiah 51, verses 1 says, In the name of Jesus, listen to me. You who who seek the Lord look at the rock which you are hewn we are back to you some of us we need children of both sex some of us we are barren father must be your uplifting right now father some of us we have these healthy issues but we stand as we are before you today in the name of Jesus this must be over we have had we can't even sleep in our houses we can't enjoy our cars we can't enjoy our properties but today in the mighty name of jesus we have remembered him why to says in second corinthians chapter 9 verses 8 he is the one now and is and god is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have all in sufficient in all things they this happen to us when we have sufficient in all things in the mighty name of jesus we overcome the sins and the systems of the devil father connect us right now father work for us right now in the mighty name of jesus there are certain things we see always there are still afar now, Lord, they come closer to us. We tap into Him. There is also embarrassment, O oh God, where we have been challenged by, by anybody, O oh God, when they are doing things, O oh God. But today, we stand back to you. We are saying, Lord, you are going to do it. Somebody talk to God. Somebody speak to God. It is another from above. It is another from God that He has released us. In the name of Jesus, he says, may you have an abundance for every good work. Have an abundance. We call upon contracts right now. We call upon deals right now. We are calling upon for the works that have to be done by us. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus, we call upon our finances. We call upon our spiritual gifts of God and the cause to the gift of plenty. Because the word says, your gift open doors for you prepare rooms for you this is what we are saying 
right now to some have children and say look at them they are not yet married they are not married they are not married they are not working though they are educated though they are beautiful what a frustration oh god we overcome it right now by your word what you have said to us in the mighty name of jesus child of god let us talk to him that that place as the bible says in second corinthians 5 17 we stand today talk to god child of god speak to god in the name of jesus second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 in the name of jesus he says says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all the things have passed away behold all things have become new this is what we need for all things to become new having trusted god in the name of jesus why john 8 31 says beginning verse 30 verse 30 in the name of jesus there is a word that has been before us today by the power of the holy spirit i'll say it john 8 30 in the name of jesus john 8 verse 30 by the power of the holy spirit may this happen to us we need the holy ghost we need the power we need the anointing we need the book of god upon us and he spoke his words as we have heard the spoken words in our minutes he says men believed in him today we need to be free that the one pays and the freedom comes from the words that have been spoken to us then jesus said to those jews who believed in him if abide in my word you are disciples you are my disciples indeed and that the truth says in the name of jesus and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free we need freedom today we need to be set free today enough is enough enough is enough to that condition to that situation to that circumstance why it was Paul who stood and said in Philippians 419, in the name of Jesus, child of God, let us speak to him. Let us talk to him. Says, My God shall supply all your needs. My God shall supply all your needs. That's what we are standing on now. For God to supply all our needs. Something is happening. Something is changed. Something is now midst. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are not let. We are not let. It is God now leading us. It is God right now ahead of us. The working must be of God. Child of God, we are talking to God who is hearing us right now, who is ready to work, who is ready to perform in the name of Jesus. That's why when we go back to Joel 22, verses 27, the Bible, the Bible says, in the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. This is your word. You will know without question that I am the thick of life with Israel that I am God yes your God the one and the only your God never again will my people be despised never again be let down he cannot give up on us again he cannot give up on us again that's why I'm saying child of God there's another side of God in our midst today there's another side of God in us tonight it is about life restoration today it's about your life to be restricted may you stand strong and talk to god may you speak right now broadly before him open up your mouth speak to him and talk to him and verse 28 says in the name of jesus and that is just the beginning that is just the beginning he has just begun we have january we have february we have march we have april we have may we have june
June. We have July up to December. The word says that is just is just a beginning. In the mighty name of Jesus, he says, after that, I'll pour out my spirit on every kind of people. He says, Your sons who prophesy, also your daughters, who old men, your old men who dream, your young men who see vision. We are going back to restoration, back to our dreams, back to our visions, back to our goals, back to our gifts, back into the spirit in the name of Jesus. On behalf of our family members, on behalf of our children, on behalf of our nation, on behalf of the world, we like restoration will stand in the mighty name of Jesus. God must work. He must walk in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. And begin to claim whatever belongs to you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is your season. This is your time in Jesus' name. Whatever has was lost in your life, begin to claim it back in the name of Jesus. That that you know, that that you don't know. This is your season. This is your time. God has appointed this season in your life for you to recover what you lost in Jesus' name. May the Lord bring back what you lost in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we are praying. We are in your presence, oh God. This is our prayer that whatever was lost, oh God, that's that we know and that that we don't know. Father, let there be recovery in Jesus' mighty name. Father, recover, recover all in our lives, oh God. Many things we are lost, oh God. Those that we don't stand as a mighty God in our lives, oh God, as it is a season of restoration, release the power of restoration, oh my God, and restore what men lost, what women lost, what boys and girls lost, what families lost, oh my God, what was lost in your church, Father, let there be divine restoration, let there be divine speed, as you bring back whatever we lost in Jesus' name, may the Lord be what you lost in Jesus mighty name yes lift up that voice lift up that voice and pray in Jesus name now lift up those hands in the name of Jesus and begin to declare and say in the name of Jesus I call back whatever was lost in my life Yes, go ahead seven times and speak that word and speak those words. I bring back whatever was lost in my life. That that I know and that that I don't know. I release the power of restoration upon your lives in Jesus' name. Let your lives be restored. Father, restore lives right now. Restore families, my father. Restore businesses and relationships, my God. Restore finances in Jesus' name. Restore health in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And say in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, he can tell him about and begin to claim back whatever you lost in Jesus' name. Say in the name of Jesus, whatever I lost in the spirit, I call it back in the name of Jesus. Whatever I lost in the physical, I call it back in the name of Jesus. Father, let there be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will give you all that belongs to you. The Lord will give you all that belongs to you. He's bringing back whatever you lost. He's bringing back whatever you lost. This is your year. This is your season. May God bring back whatever was lost in your life.
customers, your businesses. You're in the name of Jesus. Your possessions by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The favor, the blessings, the prosperity of the world. Yes. everyone in the name of Jesus and repeat these words and say Father God now at the top of your voice say Father God whatever was lost in my life 2022 is my year of recovering whatever I lost you devil whatever you took Whatever you've been hindering in my life, you can't hinder it anymore. I receive the power of restoration. Oh God in heaven, restore me. Speak it again. Thank you, Jesus. Again. Yes. And the third time. Yes. Father God, I stand on this altar in the name of Jesus. And I lift up every man and woman in your presence. I declare divine restoration. Because it's the spiritual way you use to bring back what was lost quickly. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the joy, the peace. The stability in life that they lost. Bring it back, my God. The relationships, the marriages that were lost, restored, my God. The finances, the health that were lost, restore, my God. I declare unto thee, let there be life restoration unto you in Jesus' name. I declare unto thee, let there be life restoration unto thee. I declare, let there be life restoration unto thee. If you believe it, clap those hands to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Job chapter 42 verses 10. Scripture clearly says, and the Lord restored the losses of Job. I stand as a man of God and I declare unto you, woman and man, in this place, and even you are watching, may God restore all your losses after you prayed. May God restore you. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Scripture says, when he prayed for his friends, you have prayed for a lot of things. I don't know what you've prayed for, but let there be restoration in your life. In Jesus' name. Alright, we want to give our tithes right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are watching us and you are in this service, there is that number where you can give your tithes and offerings. And probably you came with your, the money is on your phone also in this place. You can use that number to give your tithes in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and give our tithes in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless every man and woman. As they give tithes right now 
in Jesus name you can go ahead and give in Jesus name Father bless your people as they are giving in Jesus name Get a hold of your offering and go ahead and give your offerings in Jesus' name. season of change. You are my season of restoration. I prophesy this over myself. Speak. Say, I prophesy this over my life. Whatever was lost by the end of this year, I will have it because all things are mine in Jesus name let's give God the praise <laughs> hallelujah yes you may be watching and probably also you are in this place and you want to give your life to Christ Jesus I want you to touch your chest and repeat these words if you're not yet saved and you're saying I want to give my life to Christ Jesus. I want you to touch your chest and repeat these words. And say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your blood and cleanse me with your blood. With my heart, I believe. And with my mouth, I confess that you are Lord and Savior of my life. <coughs> Wash me with your blood and cleanse me with your blood. Your devil, I denounce you with your demons. The Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, as I give my life to you, write my name in the book of life and erase my name from the book of death. Today, I am saved and I'll enter heaven in Jesus name Amen let us welcome those people who have given their lives to Christ Jesus in the kingdom of God in Jesus name hallelujah yes God richly bless you and wherever you're watching us from may God bless you but before we go off air we want to welcome all of you next week in this place next week is gonna be a great great week on Wednesday is our is a public holiday is the day of liberation but also in the spirit God is coming to restore us we're gonna have a great 
Wednesday evening service. It's going to be a special service. And we're going to be having people from Miracle Center, great, great, great men of God who are coming to be part of us in that service. And God is going to do great things. And also on Friday, lunch hour, these people are going to be with us on Sunday. It's a very, very great week where God is going to do great things. And Pastor Jessica Kayanja is coming. Wow. It's going to be a lovely, lovely service. A great woman of God, our spiritual mother in this place. We believe that great things are going to happen. So on the 20th of February, don't miss the service. It's going to be a great service. We're going to be here Sunday. We're going to begin at 10. You need to be early wherever you are and come and be with us in the presence of God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So thank you for watching. God richly really bless you. Till we meet on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, be blessed. Bye-bye. will prosper. What kills the new man in you whenever the new man is not fed